Hey guys, so I just set up a .tech domain name. It's chrishawks.tech, and it's the new thing that companies and organizations are now using for a very technology-centered uh, domain name. So companies like Intel and Viacom have switched over. Organizations such as Consumer Electronics Show have switched from a .org domain name to a .tech. And if you guys are interested in also trying to buy and reserve your domain names before they are all purchased up, uh, check out the link in the description tab below. It is a 90% discount on being able to purchase those. Hey guys, what's up? So in this video, I want to talk about the web developer trends that are coming up in 2019. So what have we seen in 2018 that are leading into 2019 and what do we expect to see uh, over the next year from here? So the number one trend is these push notifications. You see them all over the place. It's actually quite annoying because sometimes you end up signing up for that shit and like you don't even know it. And then all of a sudden you're getting notified for some app that's like very insignificant. You used it once and you're like, um, why is that on there? And you have to go into your Chrome settings and figure out why they ended up, uh, you know, putting that little piece of malware in your browser like that. Um, but just kidding. But the, the, the uh, push notifi notifications are important because a lot of websites now... Uh, our mobile apps are using like progressive web apps are essentially mobile apps that act as if they are a, uh, a, a native app for your phone. So it's important for, uh, you know, push notifications to be able to work um, in that sense. So uh, that actually solves that problem of having a web app being able to uh, notify you of certain events um, on like your phone or your browser uh, or desktop browser, whatever you're on. So we're going to continue to see the material design aspect um, continue to blow up. So material design is really just a new design layout um, using fonts and um, really like two-dimensional kind of styles. Um, and it just very flat-like type of design, uh, but it's made for, a, it's a mobile-first approach, but it's actually a you know, pretty mobile-first approach that uh, is supposedly a good balance between desktop and mobile. I'm not a huge fan of it, to be honest with you, but every, everything's going towards this uh, this new type of gradient based like flat design system so websites are going to be uh, much more capable these days because a lot of advancement is being made in um, in machine learning and it's becoming easier to use so if you've ever tried to use tensorflow and built your own data models and uh, dealt with machine learning and artificial intelligence it could be very daunting uh, the math involved and everything else um, but there are existing apis that you can tap into as a web developer that give you all kinds of um, functionality whether you're trying to do map systems or speech to text things like that so uh, tapping in those to those existing resources that seem to be popping up every day is something that's going to be a, a continued trend so the next one's going to be css animations um, so you're, you're seeing these animations pop up all over the place and they actually are supported uh, in all browsers, so mobile phones have it, but a lot of people are using these micro animations uh, for little things like sending emails, pop-ups, notifications. Um, it's just something that browsers are supporting more nowadays, and it's uh, very efficient to do. We don't have to use like images and um, and crazy stuff like that. We're just using CSS 3.0 animation, um, and it and it works quite well for small animations, and they call those micro animations. So we're going to continue to see a lot of creativity with typography. Um, this is something that it used to, we used to have like standard like Arial and Times New Roman and maybe a few other ones that we could choose from. I remember like Georgia was a favorite of mine. Uh, but these days with like Google fonts and things like that, like you have so many options of different, uh, just very creative fonts. Some of these are, are copyrighted and some are not, but um, just the, the, your website is obviously much, much, um, there's just so many more options of, of making your, your text fancier. We're also going to continue to see the dominance of CSS themes using like something like SAS, but Bootstrap is going to continue to lead the way. Uh, but also a good mention of pure.css and then uh, Materialize is a project that's uh, gaining a lot of traction as well. So we're seeing a lot of CSS libraries and that's not going to go away anytime soon. So the next trend is going to be these video backgrounds. Because we're starting to get websites, or we have a lot more bandwidth these days. We can have websites that are actually giving this type of experience where there's actually video in the background of an interactive website. Uh, and it's pretty, it's pretty awesome. Like, obviously, we couldn't do that a few years ago. Uh, but with our new data, you know, data streaming and things like that, we do have the ability to do this. Although uh, it does kind of go against the whole mobile first, you know, re um, mobile responsive type of thing, because this is not something you'd want to have to download on your your mobile network. So the use of icons has absolutely exploded with Font Awesome. Uh, Font Awesome is one of the most successful Kickstarter projects of any software project out there that I know of. Um, and that's not going to go any, uh, anywhere either. So there's, a, there, there's now icons that represent so many different things. And a lot of companies and uh, people that are developing products, they're trying to associate icons with you know, user experience and things like that. And it, it, they're finding some success with it. So 
Um, you can pretty much find an icon for pretty much every little thing you can think of. So whatever your business is doing, there's plenty of icons for you. Um, so the use of sandbox editors is becoming more and more robust. So any sort of, um, it also goes into the point of uh, the fact that these client side view frameworks are not going anywhere either. So single page applications, RESTful APIs, uh, microservices, which are basically REST APIs that are broken up into much smaller projects. Uh, that is all going to be um, huge in ES6, uh, the latest version of JavaScript. So uh, being able to write in all of that stuff is going to be important. Uh, in addition to that, adding types to JavaScript is definitely a new developer trend. So that really leaves you two things. You either have TypeScript or Babel with Flow, and a lot of people are using TypeScript these days to add uh, type sanity to JavaScript. But that also brings up a good point as well. So a lot of people are like, well, we need to have type safety in JavaScript. And a lot of people think, uh, a lot of you know traditional JavaScript people are like, no, we don't need it. We never needed it before, blah, blah, blah. Um, but now we have WebAssembly that is taking rise. And WebAssembly is the ability to run C++ code, essentially, um, or, or near, C, near na native C++ speed. It's like half the speed or something like that, which is ridiculously fast compared to what browsers are doing to date. Uh, but what we're, we're able to do with WebAssembly is take C sharp code uh, and this place is uh, this was C plus plus code and it was compiled down to um, a raw binary format called WebAssembly and this uh, this WebAssembly only has four data types in it and they're all numerical but it's very very fast and efficient and JavaScript can communicate with WebAssembly which is able to communicate directly with the graphics card um, and it uses WebGL and other technologies in order to be able to do it so finally, with all these improvements to the browser, you're going to see a lot more virtual reality and augmented reality in the browser. So um, we're going to continue. I, I don't know if we're going to call this Web 4.0 or what, but like it's going to definitely open up a, a huge amount of uh, opportunity. I'm really curious to see what happens to JavaScript in the in the long term future, like five years from now, um, with WebAssembly and and whether or not like because I'm just curious if if there's going to be a bunch of APIs that WebAssembly can communicate with JavaScript, then effectively. Um, there's going to be languages that are compiling down to WebAssembly that can essentially replace JavaScript. So, uh, although you know people try to say it's not a replacement for JavaScript, uh, meaning WebAssembly, it sort of is. Um, but anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Have a good day.